Hello guys, uh, welcome back to Maison African Motives, still on Engineering Science N2. Uh, we're working on heat from the person paper of November 2022. Uh, so we are going to quickly rush through the persons that we are given on heat. So we are given on 7.1 to define the heat capacity of a substance. Okay, what do we refer to as the heat capacity of a substance? Okay, so I'm just going to show you the definition that we have uh, that the heat capacity uh, of a substance is the quantity of heat to raise the temperature of a substance by one Kelvin or by one degree. So you're actually working with the heat, okay? Uh, that is the quantity that is given. So you're raising by a temperature of one degree uh, Celsius, okay? So that is what you can uh, actually have. That is the amount of heat energy required to raise the temperature of a one kg substance by one degree Celsius. It can be uh, a definition like that, okay? Uh, you can uh, even explain it in that way. Okay, so uh, let's check on the other part. Uh, that is on question uh, uh, 7.2. We are now asked to name three forms in which fuels are found and give one example of each. Okay, uh, what are the forms that our fuels can be found in? So you guys, we are now back to that solid, liquid, and gas, okay? So we know that we can have our, 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 our substances in solid, uh, they can be in liquid, uh, or they can be in gas, okay? So the examples that we have for solids, uh, we can take example of wood, okay? We can take example of coal. Uh, there's so many that we can actually work with, okay? So anything that, uh, every solid substance that we have, uh, we can even use it from there. So ice, every, it's so many, okay? So liquid, uh, we can uh, refer to things such as petrol, uh, we can refer to paraffin, all right? We can refer to paraffin here. Uh, we can refer to diesel, uh, whatever, oil. So there are so many, okay? Uh, for gas, that's where we can have something like methane. We can refer to, to as methane. We can have uh, propane, okay? So many gases that we can have, okay? So just list uh, one example of that. Okay, so that was uh, question 7.2. Uh, now, if you are to check on question 7.3, we are given that state three factors that influence the gain or loss of heat energy of a substance. Okay, so the factors which influence the heat, guys, are taken from the formula for heat. Remember that heat is equivalent to, which is Q, is equivalent mc times the change in temperature, where m is the mass. So if you are referring to factors affecting heat, you are also referring to mass because the mass is going to affect that, okay? So we have got mass in kgs, all right? So this mass is supposed to be in kgs, all right? We have got c, which represents the specific heat capacity. So we have got the specific, heat capacity, all right? We have got the specific heat capacity here. It also influence. Then we have got T, which uh, the change in temperature. So we have got the change in temperature. All right, so like I said for you, if you have forgotten this, you can simply refer back to the formula, okay? For Q, that's it is equivalent to MC times the change in temperature. Okay, so that was question. Uh, 7.2, uh, which carry 7.3, sorry, which carried three marks just for these factors. Okay, we move on to the other part of the question, uh, which is on 7.4. So on 7.4, we are now given that determine uh, the amount of water in kgs. Okay, so take note, we need the amount of water in kgs. Okay, which cooled down 15. Uh, which could down from 15 degrees Celsius to minus 10 degrees Celsius when the energy is 93,730 joules of heat is released. Take note, guys, we are given uh, the energy in this case. 
Uh, okay, so what is going to be the amount in what in kgs? So what is this that is measured in kgs? That's the mass, okay? So we are given the energy and the previously I gave you the formula where we are given the effects that affect uh, the energy and we say we said energy is equivalent to uh, mass times the specific heat capacity times the change in temperature, okay? So the question is for us to calculate the mass where we can simply make M the subject if we divide by the specific heat capacity times the change in temperature. If we divide by the specific heat capacity times the change in temperature, we can remain with the mass. So mass is equivalent to the heat over the specific heat capacity times the change in temperature of which we have the energy that is being used in this case, the energy or the heat energy released is 93,730 joules. Okay, so you're going to have 93,000, uh, which is 93,730, all right? Over the specific heat capacity, what are we cooling down or what is taken? This is water. We are referring to water. All right, so uh, from the information sheet that we have, uh, if you are to check, on the first page here, we are given uh, these values here. So we have got uh, the specific heat capacity of water here, the specific heat capacity of water spread here. It is going to give us 4,187 joules per kg degree Celsius. So we need that value. Okay, so that's 4,187. Okay, so we are going to use this value here. So this is over 4,187 uh, times the change in temperature. Now, where we know that this change in temperature means T2 minus T1, okay? So take note, our temperature changed from 12 to, oh, sorry, from, from 15 degrees Celsius to negative 10, okay? So this is in the negative region. It was supposed to be like this T2, which is negative 10. So we are supposed to have uh, our answer as negative 10, negative 15. Okay, but this is a change in temperature in the negative region. What changed actually is that the difference between is 25. Okay, so we take that as a positive. The negative is simply indicating that this is the heat that is being rejected, lost, okay, the heat lost, it's a negative, okay, but us, we use that as a, as a positive, okay, so if you simplify this, we shall have our mass of uh, 0.895 in kgs, okay, so I want you to simplify properly on your calculator, so like I said, the negative is because here, it is the heat uh, lost, okay? So we lost because it's going from 15 to negative 10. So we lost the heat there, okay? 7.5, we are given a copper wire with length of 2,3 meters is heated from 12 degrees Celsius to 33 degrees Celsius. Calculate the final length of the copper wire, okay? So remember, if you are to calculate the final length you must have the original length and the change in length. Okay, so this is 7.5. So that's 7.5. So the final uh, length, we need the final length in this case. Let me write it like this. The final length is supposed to be the change in length plus the original length. Okay, we have the original length from the given information here. That is the copper wire of 2,3 meters, okay? So that's our original length, which is 2,3 meters. So we put our original length, 2,3 meters. So to find the change in length, we know that the change in length is going to be equivalent to uh, alpha times the original length times the change in what? The change in temperature, all right. So we have uh, the original length, the change in temperature. Do we have the change in temperature? We do not, we have it here from 12 to 33. That's 33 minus 12. So we shall have our change in temperature 
as 33 minus 12, okay? Because our T1 is 12 degrees Celsius and our T2 is 33 degrees Celsius, so you subtract, okay? Again, if we are to refer back to the information sheet that we have there on the first page, we want to see, remember, we are dealing with copper, okay? So for copper, we are given uh, that the resistivity of copper uh, not the result, you're not dealing with, they're dealing with the linear coefficient of expansion, okay? Because that's a change in length. So the linear coefficient um, of expansion for copper here, which is our alpha, that's for copper here is 0, 0,00 and so forth. Uh, so this is uh, the linear coefficient of expansion, which is our alpha, okay? So we are going to substitute this in place of alpha. All right, so let's see what we are going to have in this case. Okay, not this one, not this one, but here. All right, so that is when we are going to substitute our alpha. So it means uh, we obtained that our alpha was zero comma, uh, how many zeros there were four? Zero, 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 one, seven, like this, okay? So that means the change in length is going to be alpha 0, 0,0001, uh, uh, that's 0, 0,17 times the original length, which is 2,3 times the change in temperature, that's T2 minus T1, which is going to be 33 minus 12, okay? So that's it. Uh, from our calculator, we are going to obtain something like 8,211, if you want up to three decimal places, that's two, one, one times 10 to the exponent of negative four, which is in meters, okay? So take note, this is length, change in length in meters, okay? So to find the final length now, which is the requirement of the question, we are going to have the change in length, which is the one that we obtained of eight comma two, one, one times 10 to the exponent of negative four plus the original length, which is our original length in this case is 2,3 in meters. So, so take note, the units are the same. So that means this final length that we are going to have is going to be in meters. Okay, so if you simplify properly on your calculator, you're going to obtain 2,3, that's 2,3, 0, 0, 8, uh, 2, 1, and so on. So to three decimal places, this is going to be 2,3, one, two, three. So eight is going to change this zero into one. So it's going to be zero, one meters. Okay. So that is going to be uh, the final length. Okay. So as you can see, guys, these were the stages that you could have taken or that you can take in order to calculate the final length. Okay. So that was a uh, question uh, 7.5 having two marks and that uh, marks the end of the question. Okay, so that's what we had guys. Uh, these are the typical questions that we can, typical questions that we can have on it. So we have to revise as much questions uh, as we can, as we prepare for these exams ahead of time.